What's up, Prime fam? I hope the intro got you guys hyped up. We're going to take you guys through my heavy squat bench and deadlift workout. We're also going to be discussing today two things. One, my experimentation with low bar form here a little bit. I got some advice from Garrett Fear, one of the strongest lifters in the world, and a lot of what he recommended for me to do on my squat uh, felt pretty good, so I'm going to be rolling with that for a little bit. A few things I didn't like, but we'll be discussing the nuance there. And then I also want to talk about novel stimulus and how it can help you gain strength and catch momentum and hit PRs. We're really gonna actually be dissecting a little bit deeper into uh, the previous video I did on my last Heavy SBD Day vlog, where I talked about why it's important to switch up your program and uh, not do the same training cycle over and over again. So again, difference there, training cycle, not training block. I'm talking about a total training cycle, usually consisting of 12 to 16 weeks of training. So I was warming up here on squats. I wanna show you guys a side view. I took some side views here and Garrett Fear, uh, I was texting him. He's someone I, I asked for advice from uh, because we have a similar build. We're both lankier, taller guys, longer femurs. Uh, and he's kind of got like the same genetic makeup as me. His bench isn't the strongest, neither is mine. We're both really good deadlifters and our squats are decent. And his squat actually impresses me a lot because in my opinion, he's not really built for it yet. He's so fucking strong squatting over 700 pounds. Now, uh, what he recommended for me to do were two main things. Uh, well, kind of three. But one, he wanted me to hinge more in my squat, to really like hinge at the hip. So this doesn't mean sit back. This means to hinge your hips, which is very different than cueing sit back. So notice my knees still load forward and out, but at the same time, I'm really hinging almost like an RDL. And you can see it actually puts me in a little bit of flexion, but he recommended this in the thought process that he believes most elite level low bar squatters hinge really well. And I actually agree with this. They, most of them do. The most of them kind of have a good morning looking squat. I'm kind of the exception. I tend to be more upright. So I decided to roll with a little bit more hinging. I've actually experimented with this in the past and it's felt amazing at lighter loads, but didn't feel the greatest at maximal loads. But we'll be dissecting that a little bit further. The other thing he wanted me to do was to really flex my shoulders forward. So kind of actually protract the scapula maybe a tad and, and really more than anything, uh, tilt the, the shoulders forward to get into my brace some more. So what felt really good was the hinging. My hinge in the squat felt amazing. And it reminded me the last time I tried this, I kind of stumbled on this on my own and I felt really strong. The only problem is when I got to maximal loads, it didn't feel quite as strong, but it felt great for rep PRs. And clearly here it's working again. So we'll see what happens with heavier loads. Now what's insane about this though, is this is 529 pounds. Notice the squat bar. So you can see here, I'm keeping the shoulder tips a little bit more vertical, not quite as forward as he would have liked but I really think this is just better for me to keep the bar from rolling. But at the same time, I'm hinging more and it helps me with my depth, um, which is really nice. But two, more than anything, uh, it made me feel really powerful out of the hole, albeit a little bit more bent over, but I definitely seem to have some more leg drive there. So I'll be experimenting with that. I tried to get the shoulders more forward, like he kind of uh, mentioned and recommended here on the back down set. So it's 463 pounds on the back down. Uh, now, more than anything, guys, this is matching my lifetime PR on squats, and I'm weighing 215.5 pounds on the day I took these squat sets. The last time I hit 529 for five, I was weighing 225, 226 pounds. Um, I will say it might have been a tad easier last time I did it, but I think next week I'm about a lifetime PR of the squat. I'm aiming for 551 for five at about RP9. So I am really stoked to see what we get next week. And if I can hit that, not only is that a lifetime PR, but I'm sitting at 215, 216 pounds body weight, lighter than I've ever been when I've been hitting squat PRs. And that kind of brings me to the next point I want to talk about, which is novel stimulus. So building off of the previous training vlog that I took you guys through where I mentioned not to run the same training cycle two times in a row. Again, training cycle, not training block. So basically running the same program twice. The reason I mentioned that previously is because if you keep using the same stimulus, your body will eventually adapt and you're going to get diminishing returns. So you have to change stimulus up. So instead of doing all these maximal squats I was doing for the last eight to 12 weeks, I decided to go back to some volume strength work. So on my heavy day, instead of having a lot of comp specific singles, I'm going fives now on the squat. 
But on the flip side of that, you'll see these deadlifts I'm keeping in maximal work because I didn't actually do that long of um, a phase of maximal singles on deadlift. And so I knew the stimulus was still sufficient enough to cause some adaptation. And you guys are about to see this take place both in the squat today. You saw my 529 pound squat for five, really easy and clean. You, you even heard me yell after rep two. Oh, it's fucking easy. That's how you know it's feeling good. Because honestly, a hard sets of five, they feel like a death grind. Usually if you're getting pretty high RP. Um, but anyway, after this, guys, look at this. 650 here. I was planning on going 705 for the day at most because I had a small bump in RP. In fact, I was only bumping the RP by half. But I went up to 716 and it moved easier than I thought it would be. This was supposed to be RP 8.5 to 9. Felt more like an 8. I mean, I have never moved over 700 pounds this easy. This thing absolutely flew up and I held the grip and locked it in at the top. Went absolutely insane after. Guys, I think I'm going to lifetime PR both squat on a five rep max next week as well as my deadlift with a new one rep max. I really think that might happen. Of course, I'm going to stick on program. I'll take what's there, but I'm thinking 551 next week for five on squat, which would be a lifetime PR. And then pulling 750 after, oh man, I would be so on top of cloud nine if that happened. And guys, look at this, 617 pounds for back down sets of four here. I had three sets of four at 617. So this workout consisted of a really maximal top set of five on squat with 529 pounds, which matched a lifetime PR. And then I went to back down sets of five at squat. Then I pulled 716 pounds, and now I'm doing back down sets of four, three of them with 617 pounds here. My body is trained, and this brings me back to my original point here that you have to get your body to constantly adapt to the training program it's on so it is trained, but then switch up the stimulus at the right times to ensure that we have enough novel stimulus coming in to produce new adaptations. And this is how you get the best of both worlds where you're trained and ready to uh, handle really hard, heavy training work and volume, but then at the same time getting some new novel stimulus where we switch up a rep range or an exercise just enough to ensure we're making progress and momentum. Uh, did the last set there with straps and did the last back down set there with straps because I had a callus tear on uh, one of the back down sets. Now moving on to bench press here, uh, things are looking up for bench press as well. As always, I'm starting with my fluff work first. So I do a lot of dumbbell benching and what I call my overhead press stretch exercise before I move on to my competition style bench press because my shoulder's in rehab. And whether it be through the mechanism of what I mentioned last week, which is post-exercise analgesia, or some other mechanism, for whatever reason, my pain is modulated downward whenever I start with some dumbbell benching and get some nice volume in here and then move on to some overhead press and then get on to the competition bench. Now, my goal is to slowly remove and relinquish the need for this dumbbell benching and overhead pressing before my bench press, and that's why why I actually pulled back a little bit on this week. So you'll see here I only did two sets of some higher reps with the 100 pound dumbbells. And I really just auto-regulated this by feel. I wasn't worried about the repetition range. I think I got some sets of 10 in here, or somewhere around there. Um, and I was really just trying to get a nice pump in the chest, get a little work beforehand, and made sure my shoulder was feeling good. And then from there, went on to some overhead pressing, and then moved on to the bench press. So my goal is to slowly remove this over time, and each week I'm gonna pull back on how much I'm doing before I get to the bench press. This will ensure that slowly I adapt to uh, really not needing to rely on this for a long time. And I think one of the most important things about any rehab is that you're progressive with it. So you don't want to just think, oh, okay, I'm, my shoulder's broken now. It's been injured for a while. And it seems I only feel better when I do dumbbell bench first. And then you spend the rest of your years or a very long time feeling like you need to do all of this work before you get to your competition bench press. Because obviously this is going to pre-exhaust me a little bit. And I think it actually was affecting my strength on this day because I went a lot heavier on the bench. So I'm slowly trying to remove it. Now, the overhead press here, again, I'm flaring out the elbows and doing this really weird stretch position. This seems to target the upper clavicular fibers, specifically where that pec minor, that interior deltoid, and the uh, upper pec fibers all kind of orient along that clavicle. And this seems to work really well. Now, we had a, a comment last video, and someone asked if I could do a behind the neck press to get the same exact effect because it looked similar to a behind the neck press. And the answer is going to be no. A behind the neck press is going to train your shoulders through a very extreme shoulder external 
rotation, uh, unless you're just letting the elbows flare out, which if that's the case and you don't have the requisite mobility to properly do a behind the neck press, you shouldn't be doing that exercise because it's probably going to just injure you. You do need to have some requisite mobility in the first place to perform that, but actually behind the neck pressing is amazing for your low bar squatting position. So if you deal with shoulder external rotation issues, I'm going to go behind the neck press. But in my case, I'm actually trying to stretch out that interior deltoid and upper pec fiber region. And that seems to work really good with that flared out elbow position into the front of the body with kind of an arched back. Now, um, what I did here on bench press was I just did ascending sets of five. Normally I do straight sets, but I wanted to see how much weight I could get up to here without any kind of pain and through uh, to kind of see where my strength level is at. So I did that first set there with 264 pounds for a set of five. This year's 287 pounds uh, for a set of five. And then I moved on to, I think, 298 pounds here. And then I finished off with 308 pounds for the last set of five. Bench strength is actually feeling pretty good, especially given the fact that I'm doing, you know, multiple sets with 100 pound dumbbells on dumbbell bench beforehand and some really long tempo overhead pressing. And then I did all these ascending sets of five. I'm feeling pretty damn good. The shoulder pain was really minimal. And I really only felt it on actually the middle sets. Uh, as I got heavier, the shoulder pain kind of went away, which was really nice. So to be able to throw up, you know, 308 pounds here uh, for a decent set of five with very clean pauses, might I add. Look at these pauses. They're all very crispy, competition legal. And I'm going no wrist wraps, which makes a huge difference. And I'm pre-exhausted like a motherfucker. So basically what I'm saying, guys, is I'm feeling really great about training right now. I'm trained on the squat and deadlift like crazy. The bench press seems to be coming back. These calories seem to be making a humongous difference in me. I think it really was the right call mentally for me to go up to the 220-pound weight class because I feel so much better. Training is just blowing up, and I've been needing this, guys. Although I was hitting quote-unquote body weight PRs, you know, down, trying to stay in the 198-pound weight class, this is such a better move for me because now I'm going to hit some actual lifetime PRs. And I'm doing it still relatively pretty fucking lean and way lighter than I was when I was last hitting lifetime PRs on the squat and deadlift. So if I can get that bench press back up into the 400s, I'm looking at an 1800 plus total on the platform. And I think in the next couple of years, I might be able to crack 2000. Give me about two years. I think 2000 goes down on the platform. I really think I can do that. I know that sounds pretty fucking crazy and like a lofty goal, but I believe if I put my mind to this, I'm not done. I'm only 30 years old. I still got about five, six, maybe seven good years left in this game. And then at some point, I'll probably have to retire, but I want to hit 2,000 before I finish out. As always, doing the GHR sit-ups here to finish this day off. 2.5 hours in the gym from literally walking in taking a shit pre-workout, just, you know, FYI, TMI, <laughs> and then doing all my warm-ups, getting through all six or seven exercises, whatever I did on this day. Guys, you do not need to be in the gym a long time when you're doing these SPD days. Uh, a lot of you are going to be running our group coaching programming, and I know I'm going to get a lot of messages. Oh my God, these workouts are long. These workouts are long. If I'm getting through them doing 700 plus pounds on the bar in the time I'm getting done here, you can get through them efficiently. So, uh, that's the video guys comment down below. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys in the next one.